You've yeah. been on The View how many seasons now? Four? This is my fourth season. Full Four time. seasons. <laughs> I think this version of The View is one of the best in all of the oh, years because you, you are, again, in the, in the truth of the, the show's intention, so different and yeah. so diverse. But you yeah. talked about the difference between men and women and how people, especially on social media, process sure. the debates that happen on that show. I know, we hear all this stuff about cat fights and- uh, Which I hate, hate that word. I, I hate, hate that word. Yeah. And we hate each other. Listen, we are five women that are strong and we're passionate mm -hmm. uh, and we may disagree, like many friends disagree, like many family families disagree. Um, but we think that we, we do it in front of millions of people, but we, we do it in the way that we've always done it, I think, on this show, which mm -hmm. is respectful debate. And sometimes it gets a little heated, but it doesn't mean that it's a cat fight. It's women exchanging ideas. Absolutely. And I think we need to do more of that in our country, right? hundred percent. And be so. able to walk away and not, you can disagree, but you yeah. don't have to end it in some kind of hate of another person. You don't have to person. be disagreeable. We leave it at the table at our yeah. show. Uh, you started as a federal prosecutor. I did. Um, did you ever imagine that this little Boricua <laughs> would end up where you are now? Never. That's you. Oh, that's me with my grandma, yeah. uh, with, uh, with Nanny. Um, no, ever. And it, I think it's because as the little kid from the South Bronx Projects, honestly, um, there wasn't anybody that looked like me. There just wasn't. I remember telling my mom, I think I want to be a journalist. You know, I want to tell other people's stories. And she was like, what? There's nobody that looks like you on television. Which is so amazing, because you're you know? in New York City. Yeah. You weren't in a small yeah. rural town. And it the wasn't fact Oprah that, well, I mean, <laughs> that time. <laughs> but the fact that even in a local news, you felt that you couldn't turn on your TV station in New York City and no. see someone that looked like you. No, no, I, I didn't feel that way. And also, you know, my mom's from Puerto Rico, my father's from Georgia. And for them, it was become a lawyer, become a doctor. Yeah. Be, be something that is tangible. This television thing to them yeah. felt really out there, <laughs> right? They, they, they just didn't, didn't approve of it at when, all. When you decided to enter the world of being a prosecutor, yeah. I know that it was, as you pointed out, uh, your parents wanted something tangible. They wanted yeah. you in a occupation yes. that was rewarding uh, on many levels, but this also had a tie to something that happened within your family, your it uncle. did, yeah, and it's something that I, I, I don't talk about a lot, but I thought it was time for me to start talking about it. When I was about seven, I saw my uncle stabbed in front of me. Um, and it's my father's only brother, and I adored him. He was the fun uncle. Um, and just the two of us were there. He was, he was dating someone who turned out to be married, and her husband came in and, and attacked him. And we were, I remember as a child, just trying to stop the bleeding and thinking, just being so traumatized, thinking, please, Uncle Ed, don't die, don't die, don't die. And we never talked about it as a family, ever. The same thing happened with my sister's death. We didn't talk about it. But at some point in your life as an adult, yeah. you saw and understood, as I did, the power in sharing that Of pain. sharing the stories of... Uh, because one, one thing about my uncle that I never quite got over, no one was prosecuted. The police were not really interested. Um, and I remember being in law school thinking, I want to be a prosecutor. Mm. I don't want to be a defense attorney. I want to get the guys, like, the guy that did that to my uncle. Um, and as a journalist, I wanted to give voice to the voiceless. I wanted to tell those stories. And I recently said to my dad, you know, what happened to Uncle Ed is why I do what I do. And he said, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Like, they really thought that by moving me from the Bronx, putting me in a different school, uh, not talking about it, that it wouldn't have an impact. And that's why I think as families, we have to talk about right. 